Okay, here we are, end of week six. Yes. And slowly but surely getting some work done on the first bedroom. Yes, the massive first bedroom makeover. It is getting, would you say it's getting the overall the most work in the house is, is probably going into that bedroom? Um, Probably so, yeah. I don't know, the kitchen's getting a lot too. It is, but I mean, it's still, the kitchen's getting a ton of work, but it's still just a kitchen. Like nothing's changing with its function. Where this bedroom is becoming an ensuite. Inserting a yes. new bathroom in where there was no bathroom. No bathroom to bathroom. Yeah, it's, it's always tricky when you've got a square bedroom and you're trying to shoehorn in a bathroom and it's never quite feels exactly right. Yeah, it will eventually, but when you first put it in, it's always like, oh, that was a mistake. Yeah, that but doesn't no, go there. It'll be great. It'll feel fine. It'll be great. It's going to be a nice size bathroom. And a nice size bedroom. And a nice size bedroom still. Let's tell the kind folks. That would be you. What we're going to do with this bathroom. This is an ever changing. <laughs> you have so many lines from here now. Look! <laughs> Look at the camera. <laughs> Look at those sleep lines. But Turn your head this way. Oh, right there. Look. <laughs> Look. It's a million degrees. Look. How do you think he got this flip in his hair? It's anyway. hot. We have to siesta because it is hot. So we Lane's been wanting to do a What's Zero clearance Zero shower. Zero clearance shower. Well, that's because I want. Which again, is good for people like me who can't bend their knees. We think this. We old don't know if this like home me. is going to be for <laughs> old people like, like this like or young people like me. <laughs> but I want every bathroom to be very accessible. So we want to do a zero clearance shower. You know, we just live differently. If we had been doing this house even 30 years ago, it wouldn't matter that a bedroom has to share a bathroom with somebody else <laughs> the whole house but, has one bathroom well no i mean even if you know we were going to put let's say we were going to put two bathrooms in it would be fine that it was a two bath three bed and one of the bedrooms had to share a bathroom but we we just don't really live that way anymore we don't i don't know do kids not no, share I, bathrooms anymore i don't anymore? think they do really i mean if you look at new homes most new homes have, have an en suite for en every suite or adjacent for every bedroom. We're close there I wouldn't too. know. I don't look at old new homes very I know. often. <laughs> I don't either, really. I don't either, so, to be honest. But that's what we're doing here. We're going to put a bathroom with every bedroom. So we will have three bedrooms, three baths. Yes. And um, did some a little bit of wall building, so we get to share that with you. So I'm sure you've seen this before, but we're going to show you again the scratch layer of plaster. This is the scratch layer, which is the very bottom layer that goes into the keys that then your finished coats go on top of, was made with horse hair. And we have a big chunk of horse hair showing right there. So that's called horse hair plaster because it literally is horse hair or sometimes goat, whatever was available. All right, so we have made the decision and it's an unpopular decision. It is an unpopular decision with us. It is going to be an unpopular decision with you, probably. Eh, they don't care. But sometimes needs <laughs> money. It's an unpopular decision with me. I'm not happy about it. Who likes this it. look? It's sexy. It's huh? sexy. It's good. It's okay. sexy. Yeah. But we're, we're, we've got so many plaster issues in here. We already have drywall ceilings, yes. which are kind of nice to have, honestly. Yes. Uh, so we're going to drywall this drywall, <laughs> drywall this room. So in the, our friends across the pond, you call it plaster board. We're going to plaster board, wall board, or drywall this room. Sheet so rock. Sheet rock. Let's show you a lot of the issues. So obviously this entire space, let's take a look at that. This whole space, this, this was a wall. So all of this. <laughs> this was a wall, and now it is gone. So we would have to lab and plaster back here. We're building the new bathroom wall, which is pretty massive. We'd have to lab and plaster that. Then over here, we have where we closed up a doorway going into the living room. So that wall, we could plaster patch that. But if which we're, we did on the other we side. We did on the other side, we plaster patched it. But if we're going to drywall this, then this, why not that, and that? And then we've got that, and then there's a big, there's a huge, huge problem over there. Here, so. And then this wall where the windows are, we've had some water intrusion at some point, and under all three windows, 
there is an old wallboard patch, and then there are two areas that are filled with some kind of compound. Right. So realistically, to repair the plaster in here, it would mean massive, massive levels of plaster repair to lab and plaster, not just skim coating and base coating and then finish coating. It, it's all you know. It's all the way down to the lab to the scratch coat to the base coat to the finished coat. So anyway, so we're going to, but we're going to do it the right way. Yes. When you put up wall board or drywall in an old home, you do not just put it up around your existing trim. Don't do that. You lose your profile on your beautiful trim. So I'm going to start today taking off our window trim, taking off our baseboard and our door trim so that when we put the wall board up, we can tape and mud it. Then we can put our trim back up and it will not be to me it is glaringly grossly obvious when you walk into a space and they've put drywall up and they haven't done it properly you right? lose all your profile your that's... beautiful profile and that's one of the things we love about these historic homes are these gorgeous moldings and the profiles they have that we don't get today and then you slap some drywall up and you lose it all and so. it looks yeah it looks half done half done even if it's a beautiful drywall job it looks badly done so, so we're going to do it right and take off the pieces we need to take off yep and we're going to drywall this entire room and this may be the only room there may be a couple others I think this is the only space that we're going that to drywall, drywall. yeah and I don't know why this space endured more damage it I think did. it's because teenage boys were in this room. <laughs> I think all of this is a result of having teenage boys in this room <laughs> well remember this is the room where the door was used the, the closet door was used as the dark board yeah so I think holes in the bottom of the wall are pretty indicative of two teenage boys being raised here. Right. <laughs> so that's the plan. The plan. So let's just get started. Hey, Kevin. Yeah? You want to show the good people why we always wear work boots? Ready. <laughs> did it go into your footsie? No. No, it did not. Where are your work boots? Machine, though. Unlike me. I pulled up and off all the trim, but you'll see that. See our different crowbars. There's you need different crowbars for different things. We love this, this is one. My this, favorite one. Yeah, this is a new one. You put it in and then it cries out, which is really cool. It's great for <laughs> great for saving baseboards and trim. Delicate work. Yes. Delicate work. two pieces so that when you put it in here, like so, I'm already going to loosen that one. Then this part tries it against this part. You see that? This is our, maybe our, that's my favorite tool. It's a good tool. I'm going to tell them where we bought this. Oh, I got it. <laughs> oh, Amazon or something. Yeah. Facebook? Yeah, it was one of those Facebook ads. And I was like, yeah. ooh, I got to have that. But they have them at any big box store. Has Do them they now. have them? Like, yeah. Okay. Well, they should because it's really good if you want to save your base, save your trim. Any delicate pry yeah. work you have to do. And because it's so thin, that's the thing. Yeah. Some beautiful old growth wood right there. That's why I want to reuse it. All right, I've got to do a base plate on a wall I'm framing up. So I've got this piece that I pulled out of the closet and it's going to match up with the size of my other studs since they are larger than today's studs and of course like i've told you <laughs> so much more dense so much stronger uh, but this isn't exactly the right size so i'm going to rip it down on the table saw it smells so good i know i was about to say it's beautiful and it smells great doesn't it yes does it smell better than we do uh i think over Should you just rub it on you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I smell fantastic. Gee, you smell terrific. Thank you. All right, so here's your base plate. Now I'm running these horizontal because that's what we've already got here and that's not going to hurt anything. So you got to put your base plate down, your top plate in, put your studs in. And I'm going to use all of this old growth because I'm going to be able to take out these pieces and put those here to give us a nice solid wall. <laughs> do, 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 do. Bow, bow, bow. Don't point it at me. It's on safety. 
Never point a gun at another. No. Okay. Even when you're pretending to be James Bond. Well, I thought we were having the shootout at the OK Corral. <laughs> That's the music I was giving you. I know. Bam. Sparks, baby. <laughs> Smells like pine cleaning. Pine salt. Pine salt. Why, why couldn't we get the board out, Kevin? <laughs> all of this and going every different direction, all buried in the wood. <laughs> How many are there? One, two, three, four. four. You've already pulled one out. So yeah. Five. Yep. Five nails. They had that thing in there. How did they get them doing that? This is the one I want to know. The how this one was even in there because that would be the dead center of that post. <laughs> magic! Did they have some kind of Victorian magic that yes, we don't know about? They definitely did. <laughs> and this is what happens when you want to reuse your old growth lumber. You have to take out all the old growth nails. <laughs> Quick tutorial time. How do you know when to use a screw and when to use a nail? And what are the strengths and weaknesses of a screw and a nail? Well, let me tell you. The nail has sheer strength. So pretend my hands are boards. They are nailed together. A nail will not break if it is sheared as a back and forth motion like this, allowing your wall or your house to sway a bit and still keep the integrity. Whereas a screw, if it were done this way, would break. A screw has tensile strength, which means it holds things together better. If my hands were nailed together like this, I could easily pull them apart. If it was a screw, I couldn't pull them apart. But if I have shear resistance, then that's when it snaps. So you use a combination of the two when you're framing something. What you about to start doing, Kevin? I'm gonna start framing up this bathroom. Bathroom! So I'm gonna nail my base plate and my top plate so they'll have sheer strength. We're about to put in a doorway. We're actually reusing a doorway that was from an old closet. So here's my door casing. So I was able to measure this and apply it here. Now, before I open up my door, I'm gonna go ahead and put my bottom plate all the way across to give me a straight line. So then I put in my jack stud, which is gonna hold my header. Now, today we use a good two by 12 header that goes across here to bear the weight. You can see, back in the day, they didn't do that. Now, they had much stronger material then, but they've got a two by four, which is a true two by four, and then they've actually got three by fours here and here for your cripple studs, but nothing under this. So that's where this jack stud comes in really handy. It's gonna hold the weight, distribute the weight from across there back down to the floor. But the one thing I did wanna show you was this bottom plate. I run it all the way across to make sure I get a good straight line. And then I just cut it out before I put it in my door. the wall on this side and that's the one that we're losing most of so we needed to redistribute most of that weight that's the reason we really did overkill on this header here and we're going to overkill on the studs we don't have them all up yet but we're also going to put a header that expands this joist over to here and then brings the weight back down to carry out all the weight that we're not really picking up with this wall back here well, I'm excited. This episode is brought to you by Toodaloo. Toodaloo. How great is that for the name First of the of company, all, right? I Toodaloo. need you to see this packaging. 
Toodaloo is an amazing trail mix. You know, we're always telling you about how when we're doing restoration work, we get hot, we get sweaty, we get exhausted. I have blood sugar issues. We get hungry. We need the energy. We need the protein. We need these, adaptogens. These things are brilliant. Lane has known about adaptogens for years. Ever. So every day of my life, I take turmeric, reishi mushrooms, lion's mane mushroom, and turkey tail mushroom every day. And I take it in supplement form at night before I go to bed. Well, guess what? Get them right here. They're with all a, in here. A delicious trail mix. Yes. So I'm going to try my toodaloo. This yeah. is. Tell them what flavor you got there. Slow your roll, which again, I just need a t shirt that says toodaloo slow, slow your, your roll. roll. <laughs> um, sweet maple mix. It has sprouted nuts. This has the reishi mushrooms and ashwagandha in it, which is, those are all things I take all the time anyway. Look them up. You will want them in your life. Lane's known about these for years. Mm. She gets me to take these supplements. Oh my god. It goodness, tastes like it maple candy. Good. Okay, well, I've got hot oh, to yum. try. So this is spicy. Spicy citrus to support mm. gut health. You know I need gut health. You do need gut health. <laughs> I love me some spicy. Well, I'm going to try this one, Turning Heads. Again, I just need a t-shirt that says Toodaloo Turning Heads. <laughs> That's perfect. Like, Toodaloo. Oh, this one's chocolate. Oh, yummy. Is that great? Yeah. I have... Smoke show. So oh, this you is want barbecue. Smoke show. Oh. This is my smoke show of a husband. That's why I need smoke the t-shirt, right? Smoke show. Yes. Okay, I've got barbecue here. I can't wait to taste this one. This looks. Look at that. It looks great. Oh, that looks like somebody you love. Is it barbecuey? Really good. Okay, I love this. <laughs> look at my finger. Go to our link at tutaloo.com slash restoration and use code restoration to get five dollars off your first order. Each ridiculously tasty flavor benefits your body in a different way. So choose your favorite flavor and benefit from skin health, digestion, focus, and relaxation. Toodaloo is non-GMO, gluten-free, grain-free, plant-based, packed with organic superfruits with no processed sugars, and is carbon conscious. They also have the OMG guarantee, which I love because they promise you, if you do not think that this is the most delicious trail mix you've ever eaten, They'll refund you. Toodaloo, our new favorite. Go to toodaloo.com slash restoration and get yours today. Toodaloo! A lot of wall building. A lot of wall it building. It doesn't look like a lot of Ran wall building. Ran out of lumber, so I got as much done as I could. Well, we should show them that we actually didn't run out of lumber. Well, I'm sending some pieces back <laughs> because they are, what did I say? This one turns left toward Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Took a left Albuquerque. turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> Would you like to have a tour of the new bathroom? Our new spacious bathroom? actually pretty big size. Uh, door will go here. Door is a right hand swing interior into our shower. And we're gonna do a zero clearance shower here, but we actually have a little bit of a mislevel floor and it actually goes this way. So we're going to have to build that side up just a bit to distribute our water back to this corner. We'll tile the entire floor. You're gonna have your sink here, which will be a corner sink. It'll be really pretty and it'll be the first thing you see when you walk in will be the shower and the sink. And then of course our little toilet's gonna sit right over here. We like to hide that. Uh, but I'm excited about doing this. Um, it's gonna be interesting building it up so that we get a nice flow of water down to the drain. Uh, but also you made some beautiful, beautiful pillows. Yes. Uh, They're not pillows. Well, cushions. We bought, when we bought this house from Judge Blau and his wife, uh, the estate of his wife, Sarah, her living room set was still in the living room. And it's actually a beautiful 1920s beautiful. solid wood, um, caned back chair, rocker, and couch. But the set had, the set, the set had set in this house <laughs> for 12 years while no one lived here. And it was, it was in, those cushions were in really rough shape. Oh yeah. Like I'm pretty sure a cat gave birth. And I'm not kidding, I really think a cat gave birth on one of them. Um, it's possible. And so we, we want to keep the set, but we wanted to make it feel more appropriate for the house. Light, airy, comfortable. So, but you guys know that we are reduce, reuse, recycle kind of fanatics, right? Right. So where did you get your material? I had 
a new old bedspread. Nobody panic. It's not an it's not an antique Chanel bedspread. This is a Chanel bedspread that I bought at a department store about ten years ago. Kevin won't let me use it on our bed because he says that it's scratchy. It is scratchy. <laughs> so it was just in the closet. And out of one bedspread, I was able to make new either cushion covers or slip covers for the entire set. I was very impressed. Yes. The pro time. So this will, since I'm not doing a permanent upholstery on this piece, I'm just doing slip covers. This Velcro will stick the skirt to the frame and keep it from slipping every time we sit in it. We want cushions. What? Cushions. 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 We want elastic on first. Uh, crowds are. Going wild. Going wild. Oh boy. Bum bum bum. Oh. Six inches too long. No. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, that looks soft and cushy. It is soft and cushy. It's a place for us to lay our weary bones. So we work on this house. Too bad it's white and I will get it dirty <laughs> immediately. That's why it's removable so it can be washed. My sweaty husband can sit on it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, you can just take the cushions off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we had before. Oh, you know, I'll probably sit on a trash bag, so it'll happen. There you go. That is a man who had a mama when he was a teenager. <laughs> you better put down a towel before you sit on my couch, boy. <laughs> it's a sign that you were raised right, baby. All right, give us more. Okay, okay. We're clamoring. And I love the way they turned out. They look so good. We did reuse the foam filler. Um, I don't know if everybody knows, but foam is expensive. Well, well it's, a, it's petroleum. a petroleum product. Right. So A, when you throw out foam, you're throwing out a petroleum product that's very difficult to get rid of. It's not great for the environment. When you buy new foam, you're consuming petroleum products, not great for the environment. So not to mention that petroleum products are, are very expensive right expensive. now. So we just re we reuse the old foam. I wrapped it in fresh batting. So it's nice and fresh and clean. And then we have those beautiful clean covers on it. A bunch of pillows. Oh, pillow. pillow time. How Her could I, favorite. how could I forget, forget about all pillow time. of the pillows? <laughs> oh my goodness. Look, you are one of the few men in the world whose wife is not crazy about pillows. Oh. I have a completely logical number of pillows. Ooh. No near me. Is she cute? Oh, she's so cute. This looks like a living room. She cute. Look how cute she is. She's so cute. Oh, where are you going? And you know I'll mess with it like 10,000 times of course. in the next couple of days. This is not the finished look, but. Talk about your easel over there. My easel, this is my 1880s Eastlake Painter's easel. This room, this whole house feels like an artist's house. It just feels, it's got full of light. It's bright, it's airy. The view out the window is one of the prettiest views I've ever seen in my whole life. So I felt like what better place to set up a little like art creation space than here. And I found an Eastlake 1880s ebonized easel mm -hmm. to use. It's beautiful. Yeah. The, we haven't put the little thing on yet, but. You can gain inspiration just from the easel. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and then you couldn't help yourself. You went ahead and decorated. This is what happened. There's always a reason. Why did you have to stage that? Well, here's, here's the deal. Okay, the deal. You we had a great idea. You found a great thing. Brought, instead of bringing our open trailer, Yes. We oh, rented yeah. a U-Haul eight-foot trailer because once I had made the beautiful eight-foot-long 
couch cushion, it is true. What is it? 76 inches? It's 70, really long. Yeah. 72 inches? 72, I think. We, I didn't want to fold it because I didn't want it to show up with a fold in it. We didn't want to put it in the open trailer in case it rained or got dirty. So we rented a U-Haul trailer. It was very inexpensive. It was like $58 to rent the eighth trailer. So if, if you have a cargo trailer company and you want us to advertise your company, please, we need a cargo trailer. I need a cargo trailer. Uh, anyway. Hello. We had an eight foot trailer. One, a covered eight foot trailer. Yeah. One time. Uh huh. So I brought the things that I wanted to go in the covered eight foot trailer, which these were. Uh -huh. Now, if I was moving in, there would be a secretary over in that corner. <laughs> there would be a huge mirror right there. There would be a coffee table with all of its accoutrement, but there's not. So this is Our, just a, this the, is a glimpse. The, the viewers want to know, yeah. will, will there be a wagon wheel coffee table? I mean, they're holding TV, out hope. TBD. Okay. You'll have to come back for that one. I okay. It's all up to you. So then I thought to myself, self, I need to go ahead and bring everything that I can fit into this one trailer that is long that I don't want to come in the open trailer. Right. So we had like a rug. Right. Um, I had an antique easel, very tall antique easel. Cool, cool. Yeah. Easel. Uh, what else did we bring? A lamp. There's a really cool oh, a lamp. lamp. Yeah. Tall floor lamp. Bought the fancy lamp for the house before we officially opened the house. <laughs> we went to one of those famous Roy Dudley estate sales that I go to. And I saw it. And it's blue. And we'd seen the house. We hadn't bought it yet. And I thought, I'm going to buy that house and I'm going to put that lamp in. And I'm going to do the whole living room around this lamp. <laughs> things that I didn't want to bring on the open trailer so we went ahead and brought them all. Well then they're here and they're in the storage room and if they're here they're in the storage room they're just in the way you have to dig around them and through them and over them to find the tool that you're looking for. Look, my artist can sit right here. She's gonna look out the window. She can use her paints and her brushes. What's happened to the lamp? It doesn't go there, it goes here. Oh, okay. See, you, Did it tell you? How long have you been married to me? Did it speak to you? You know that this is a process, that things evolve into their space. And this told me that it didn't go over there, it goes over here. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> So we hauled all that in. What else did we do this week? We, we pulled down the mantle there in the in the yes. Oh. and found a ton of great many treasure, right? Treasures. I get a lot of questions about how do I take my old mantle off the wall. Your mantle is secured in one of two ways. It's either finished nailed in, you won't, and in that case, you won't see any evidence of anything holding it on from the exterior. And in that instance, you just have to get one of our beautiful thin crowbars that we showed you behind it and lightly pry it away from the wall. But you'll often see mantles like these in Miss Pearl. You see this little knobby button down here that's been painted over 500 times, already broken away a lot of the painter on the outside. You pop those off and underneath, you're gonna find flathead screws. This mantle has four. Those are screwed into the little supports behind the mantle. Once we unscrew these, this mantle will pop right off the wall. So, there you go. Oh my gosh! Oh, look at this. Ooh, wait, wait, we gotta get, wait, 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 we gotta get a close up of this. Where's your phone? This is packed. I mean, oh letters, my gosh! Pictures. Treasure, treasure, treasure. Look at this. Look at that! All right, we got a letter here. Me. To Mr. George Huff from Western Auto Associates Store. You know Mr. George Huff? I don't. 1950. Looks like Mr. 1950. George Huff lived here
many treasures, but we've been so busy, I haven't had time to open up all the letters. And you know what I realized today? I what? went and opened one up. They've never been opened. Really? Yeah, a lot of them are bills, and they've never <laughs> been opened. So all I can think of is no, in 1950, George Huff lived here and like came in one day and laid his mail down and some little rat absconded with it and put it all in his little rat nest. And then like the eye doctor and the pharmacy and the hardware store are like, that George Huff, he never pays his bills. He never pays his bills. And that rat never pays me either. Yeah. What are you finding? What treasures do you have? These appear to all be... Postcards and probably Christmas. Let's see. Two... Forest from Mary. Does it look like Forest? F O R E S T? Yeah. From Mary. Mr. Huff lost all his. Oh, look at that! Oh. oh my gosh, he's doffing his cap to us. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's. Wow. I couldn't see his arm. It looked like it was just floating. That is cool. Is that a. Is he a train conductor? I don't know. This is the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Oh, Lewis. So he was the post adjutant Lewis somebody and this is I'm sure to George George Huff more letters to George Huff I mean look at these <laughs> just letters and letters George George lost a lot of correspondence Dr. Perry MD oh, look oh at that. somebody didn't go to church <laughs> you in trouble you guys know this is literally the only reason I do these houses, <laughs> so I can find some of these rat nests. That is a furniture store, appliance store. Here's $10.75, 8 16 1950 On a radio. On a radio. They would appreciate the balance on this account soon. Mm. Ooh, George, George pay you your bills. Go pay. <sighs> oh, BC powder. <laughs> Time capsule. Oh, gum. I think we have some clove gum. Clove. You know, clove. Well, yeah, that's... They, that's they made it. And then we have another letter. Please come in and see us regarding the something you left for repair. Radio. Probably the radio. And then, that's not in good shape. Yeah. But that is... That's not Huff. That's earlier than that. Ooh. Oh no, is that it? I think that's all. It's all my treasures. Oh. So we found a lot of fun things. You, yeah, we that was fun. That's one of the first times we've had a pull down the mantle and there's a whole bunch of stuff behind it. You see that a lot. You see people having that happen frequently. We have not had that happen. So I was excited. Yeah, that I was, was really. That was cool. I was more excited than I should have been to find a rat's nest full of bills, but it was exciting. <laughs> Your dad made us some wonderful corbels. We were missing one of our corbels entirely at some point not that long ago probably 10 years or so there was some porch repair done not, not very great well. it, they it's actually not level they it's not level they poked through the lab in the living room with the repair busting through the lab busting up the plaster that's what caused a lot of that plaster damage mm -hmm. um and now it's not level and we lost a corbel i think in that repair so we were missing one of our corbels very important so dad papa restoration took one of the broken corbels made the pattern, made us two brand new corbels. They look beautiful. And then we could see ghost marks on our fascia, the other side of our fascia, where there used to be fascia drops. And so he has made us beautiful fascia drops and brackets. It's gonna change the way the front of this house looks dramatically. You're gonna like way. the way you look. Yes. When you are doing a rehabilitation, you will almost always find ghost marks. And what ghost marks are, are telltale remnants of architectural elements that have been removed. The most common ghost mark you're probably gonna find are, it is uh, some kind of mark in your floor from where there used to be a wall. You'll see a change, either change in color, uh, in the in the finish because you know for eons the this this part of the wood was exposed to the air and began to oxidize differently and then this was under the wall and so it didn't oxidize so you'll see that that shade change but you'll often see ghost marks from where the stair rise has been changed you'll be able to see it going up the wall you'll see if you've had architectural elements removed and that's what we're dealing with here with the ghost marks with the core bowls and then these fascia brackets we can see where for years architectural elements were painted around 
so there's paint buildup. Yeah, there's always a lot of. <laughs> but there's nothing about there. A quarter inch paint buildup. The good news is for the corbels, we have other corbels, so we know exactly what pattern to use. For the fascia brackets, we don't know what they looked like, so we're using. Dad used the corbels as the basic pattern matched the so the the profile is the same profile basically as the corbel and then he gave us a little floret detail in the center oh, and where did that come from that came from in their home they have a phone nook that has this beautiful little tulip detail and he copied that pattern and put it in our brackets which it's funny because when he showed me the pattern it's so perfectly perfect for this era home. I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, dad got the best like stick style Victorian detail. Mm -hmm. Where did he find that? And he found it out of his 1920s Tudor revival, which is just, it, that was just funny to me because on on this house, it looks so perfectly like a East Lake inspired design. I wonder if that little design. phone note came out of a, nah, it's, it was older than the house. No, because telephones, that, that shaped telephone didn't come in until the 20s. You know, before that you had the one ring a dingy, <laughs> a two ring a dingy. I need to speak to uh, Clarence down at Broy Hill. <laughs> That's what you had before that. You didn't have this. You had this. Yes, then you talked to Marge. Or you, or you, or you just had this from the wall, and you called Arthurina. <laughs> I need Crestwood one five nine, please. That's what uh, you had. Yeah. Extreme close up on the top of your head. <laughs> Beauty fish. Uh huh. I like the sweat in the dirt. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys we really appreciate all of you guys sticking with us get this miss pearl all finished up and pretty again i'm sweaty check us out next week <laughs> we'll be sweatier we'll be even because it's getting deeper into the summer and it's hotter and well, hotter we're really getting to the point where big changes are happening big constructions happening up until this point it's been a lot of pretty and a lot of cosmetic and cosmetic but we're digging in deep and we're doing framing and we'll be doing plumbing and um the big stuff if we can get a plumber out here we well, will do some plumbing therein lies the challenge sure sure all oh. right guys well thanks a lot for sticking with us we will see you next time Mwah.